Second Maccabees isn't in the Bible. It is now, right? Now, Roman Catholics may dispute that, but I think that's the best explanation as to why we have different Old Testaments. Uh, the canon, as we know it today, consists of 66 books. Uh -huh. um, over time, that's changed, evolved. Books have been added, taken back out, added, taken back out. Uh, Revelations was come and gone a lot. Um, my question is, mm -hmm. I mean, there's some Bibles that have the Apocrypha in it today still. So my question, I guess, would be, is it worth exploring other books, or is that um, something that should be avoided? Okay, let's talk about the canon for a second, because what books should be in the Bible is an important question. And uh, you people, here's an example. You get the question a lot, right? So you have a slide for it. People go, is this a staged question? No, these are common questions. So yep. we have slides for it, because I can't even remember all this stuff myself, right? Okay. Uh, first of all, what books should be in the Bible? And one point I want to make before we get started, the canon, which means the standard, is not required for proving the resurrection. Okay, you don't need uh, to discover which books were inspired to know whether Jesus rose again. Even if the books weren't inspired, Jesus has risen from the dead based on the evidence. Okay, but anyway, the canon, I like what Bruce Metzger said at Princeton. He said, the canon is a list of authoritative books more than it is an authoritative list of books. What does he mean by that? What he means is the church did not determine the canon. The church discovered the canon. The church didn't determine what books would be in the Bible. The church discovered what books should be in the Bible, which were inspired. And how did they do that? What they did is they tried to figure out, was it written by a prophet of God? Was the writer confirmed by acts of God, i.e. miracles? Or someone who was confirmed as an eyewitness. For example, Paul confirmed Luke. Although Luke was not an eyewitness, Paul confirmed him and actually said uh, or quoted from Luke's gospel, it seems, when he was talking about the, uh, uh, the Last Supper. Also, was it accepted by the people of God? These are the tests they use. Now, I would quibble a little bit with, with, with how you characterize the question about the canon has changed, books were taken out, not taken out. I don't think that's necessarily true. Early on, there were some questions about whether, say, James should have been in there and Revelation should have been in there. Yeah. But once you got into the uh, fourth century, the 300s AD, when Christianity became tolerable, then you had those councils that got together and discovered what books should have been in the Bible, and there really wasn't a lot of dispute by that point. In fact, by even prior to that, by about 108 AD, 108 AD, 25 of the 27 books we call the New Testament had already been quoted by early church fathers as being authoritative, okay? But here's a few other things to consider. What book should be in the Bible? Gospels and Acts are cited during the lifetimes of the apostles. So we know that they're early. They're quoted as authoritative and unique. They're collected early in one volume called a codex. It looks like a book that we have now. It was, they were publicly read and expounded. Commentaries were written on them. The opponents admitted the gospels were written by the disciples and no other gospels were treated this way. Okay, now, why does the Catholic Church have a different Old Testament than the Protestant Church? I'll give you the answer as I understand it, and my co-author, Dr. Norman Geisler, wrote a book called Roman Catholics and Evangelicals, Agreements and Differences. I think it's still an excellent book, even though it's 25 years old. Even Roman Catholics have endorsed the book, and I was brought up Catholic because I'm from New Jersey, and it's the law. I went to Catholic high school, okay? But as, as I see it, it seems to me that the additional books of the Old Testament that were added by the Roman Catholic Church at the Council of Trent beginning in about 1546 were books that the Jews did not consider part of their Old Testament. Why are the Catholics putting it in their Old Testament? It seems to me because they were trying to counter Luther and Luther wanted to reform the church. He didn't want to break away from the church. He wanted to reform the church, and when he did, when he tried to do that, the Roman Catholic Church dug their heels in and said, now we're adding these books, or we're going to say these books have always been a part of the Old Testament, because those books 
uh, particularly I think it was 2nd Maccabees, affirmed the idea that you could pray for the dead, which, yes. was, which is what indulgences was all about, which is really what riled up Luther, that, you know, you're giving money to the church so your mother's soul can pop out of purgatory? Where are you getting that from? 2nd Maccabees. Oh, okay. Well, 2nd Maccabees isn't in the Bible. It is now, right? Now, Roman Catholics may dispute that, but I think that's the best explanation as to why we have different Old Testaments. Now, is it worth reading these works? Sure. In fact, First and Second Maccabees has some really good historical information in them. I just don't think they're part of the inspired canon. And even if there is a dispute, remember, while it's important it is the Old Testament, Christians are under the New Covenant, that's not right. the Old Covenant. I 100% agree with everything you said. I, um, I just know that there's some of the books, uh, uh, Enoch, for example, which is pretty far-fetched when you read it you're like whoa this, how can this be possible but um so i wonder if your opinion might have been and i agree with you that um our bible now is a, a, a god-inspired book mm -hmm. um but i wondered if maybe you thought maybe some of those more far-fetched or books well that, i think that enoch, great lunacy would be taken out by an individual well enoch uh i i am not an expert on the book of enoch but my friend michael heiser is and if you look up Michael Heiser, H-E-I-S-E-R, and go to his website, you can read some articles. He thinks Enoch gives us some, some good information about the Jewish mindset at the time, even though it's not an inspired book. So these are right. books worth reading. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.